Earlier on in the module, I mentioned passing environment variables to containers. Well, we do that with the env instruction. And it's pretty simple. It's just env followed by the name of the variable equals and then the value to store in the variable. These variables are then available inside of a running container as normal environment variables. So let's create a couple. env and we'll make this one Nigel and this one Poulton. And we're sticking them both on the same line here because guess what? If we put them on two separate lines as two separate env instructions, well, we'll get two image layers. So be careful again. Anyway, for now, let's comment this out. Save that. And let's build it. And we'll run a container from it. A quick env. There we go. Right there. Simple enough, yeah? But we can also use them in the context of our Docker file too. So let's go open that up again. And if we change them here to be ping, and this one to be 8.8.8.8, .8 then down here if we go cmd, uh, var1, var2. Alright, so when we come to launch a container from this, these two variables will get expanded so that the main process inside of the container will be ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Let's go and see if it works. Oh, real quick, I added this line up here earlier on, because ping isn't installed by default on the Ubuntu 15.04 base image, so we had to manually add it. So, docker build, we'll call it pinger, like that. Start a container from pinger. Okay, docker ps, and there it is there. But that's actually not very helpful since it's not expanding the variables. So what about if we look at the container's logs? We'll specify its funky name there. Magic, that's working. But a better way would actually be to follow the logs. You might remember from earlier on in the course, this kind of acts like the tail command. Yeah, there it is, pinging like it's 1999. So that's ENV. Next up, We'll look at volumes before wrapping up the module with a quick summary.